Films from Burma by Burmese directors screening inside or outside the country is not a regular occurrence. For a long time under a succession of military dictatorships, there were few opportunities to make local films, let alone screen them. As the generals started to loosen some of their hold on civilian life, if only ceremoniously, a film school and film festival opened in Yangon. The effects have been impressive. The school produced 16 films last year and put on 30 screenings at 39 film festivals in 22 countries around the world. The Human Rights Human Dignity International Film Festival, in its last edition, showcased 65 films with nearly half of those national productions, all screening to packed theatres. Most of the output in Burma so far has been short films, and most are focused on local stories. Directors have sought, foremost, to chronicle their own experiences under military rule, in the countryside, in small villages, inside their homes. They start small scale, but the themes touched on are often wide-ranging. Ethnic conflict, political repression, the early signs and actions of a nascent democracy the fight for equal rights by women or one of Burma's 135 ethnicities. I knew about the Yangon Film School when I came to Burma at the start of this year to work on a documentary. The school was on our radar because it seemed to be the only setup in the country that was capable of providing sophisticated technical support. It also had an impressive output of homegrown films. I was intrigued. But our shooting kept us in Mandalay. So when the Frontline Club in London devoted an evening to films from Burma earlier this month, I went along. Susanna Lala Sui was one of the evening's special guests. The screenings included The Little Finger, which is partly a chronicle of her campaign as parliamentary candidate for the victorious NLD party in the 2015 elections. She won her seat. <laughs> Documentary seems to be serving a particular function in Burma today, a kind of reckoning with past experiences and events that have not been allowed any expression until now. This may also be a way of trying to take control of and shape the future, with the first civilian government since 1962. But the military retains 25% of the parliament and holds key positions. How different, really, is Aung San Suu Kyi's government to the previous ones under the generals? I asked Susanna about this. Yes, uh, we have 25% of military representative in the, in Lutto, in parliament, but we still have the majority of the NLD um, MPs. So, uh, and then um, recently, the, the, the state announced the, the, the roadmap for the future. It is including like a man of the constitution. Uh, I doubt that military will agree and hundred percent but we have to negotiate like a gentleman agreement, maybe something like that. The evening's other special guest, Igor Blazovich, explained to me how he set up the Human Rights Human Dignity Festival and what filmmaking environment he had found in Burma originally and how fast it has evolved into something more sophisticated and ambitious. The first year of the festival was really extraordinary because a lot of local, uh, they are not filmmakers, they are you know, young guys with a camera, started let's say, to make films, let's say, but the films are, have been a combination of the YouTube, bad Myanmar television, and, uh, and the total lack of the story, total lack of the concept, total lack of the understanding what they want to say, because they have never ever seen documentary film in their life. And then suddenly, really in just two years, Let's say we had a whole change 
of the of the approach to the filmmaking. And suddenly these young filmmakers have found all these untold stories, has jumped on them, have started to learn the film language, and started to make extraordinarily interesting documentary films. The line from the NLD is that things will improve for Burmese filmmakers under civilian rule. Igor is concerned about censorship, but he doesn't see it as forbidding the development of film culture in Burma. He is focused on getting young directors to make their own films and show them in their country, creating a fabric for cinema and discussions around what is on screen. But how does all this play out on the ground? I wanted to know what the Yangon Film School directors themselves wanted to achieve, how they saw their work, what aspirations they had for the future, and how politics and aesthetics informed their decision to turn to filmmaking in the first place. So I arranged to speak to some of the most exciting students there, whose short films I was impressed by for their choice of subject, narrative strength and mise-en-scene. Soe Moe joined me over Skype from Kaya State, where he has been living for much of his life, and was the location for his short film My Leg, about a workshop that makes artificial limbs for amputee victims of the regional conflict. It is this region that evidently inspires him in his filmmaking. I'm an indigenous person who lives in Kareni state, or Kaya state, you can call both Kareni or Kaya state. So I have been living in this state uh, for over 20 years. I have been facing, uh, you know, civil war in my state. So every day, every night, uh, you were hearing about fighting. You know, you were hearing about bomb, bombing. I went to the border areas, time Burma border area. So I had a chance to uh, work with at the end group. Kin Myanmar and Shun Lei spoke to me directly from the meeting room at the Yangon Film School. They have been students there since 2011 and 2012. Our conversation shifted between the personal and the political as they told me about the inspirations for their films. Unfortunately, the sound quality in their interviews was quite poor. The filmmakers experienced some technical difficulties in Yangon, and we didn't receive most of the interview footage from their side. One of my friends, hey, uh, this is good right there. She's also my assistant director at the time. She, she, this is a uh, true story. So this is the time when her father is in prison for the Missing tells the story of a young girl whose father is taken as a political prisoner after the 1988 uprising. Camille, Leila, Leila. Quite a lot of films at the moment in Myanmar are based on personal experience. It seems that filmmakers are drawing a lot from personal experience. My, my grandpa, he's a really uh, politician, and, and, and he, at the time, he, he's also, uh, how can I say, a refugee in the US. So I really understand the, the, the political family. Guy. I see. Okay, okay, okay. Salami. In 2012, when we joined uh, for the beginner courses, uh, then we have to uh, make a final film as a school project. So I was uh, working as a director for the film called My Grandfather's Art. Which is about a woman living in this old colonial building with her grandpa who was an uh, important person in uh, literature and also political E as well. Her parents died when she was very young, so she grew up with her grandpa. 
and she is a writer now and also a university professor. ตุ๊ลัยมียาเกยเฉยน้องอ่ะสวยปูจุ๊ตุ๊กูมียาจีกูหนีไปแกดาบ่ยายบ่ต้องใจกูเลยนายงานจ้ามาสิปัญญาเ